everyone. As we move on to the next video Friday, I would like to acknowledge the opportunity that came across me to be a part of this newfangled light discussion with Krina and Oishi in today's chat show. So many of us are forced to write a very tough period in Australia as coming as international students, especially as girls. It is no surprise how most of us are often at a risk of safety, trust, fears, or could be anything like acculturation or lack of knowledge of our own rights or even loneliness, isn't it? So since we see borders, borders opening up very soon and the infusion of new international students who haven't been Australia like ever, we thought, how about we welcome the two most beautiful women, Krina and Oishi, to the show and let's talk about it. Let's talk about our stories on different challenges we had as we finished, like we came as international students and now we are three independent women who, by the grace of God, are earning good. So um, before I could thank both of you, just acknowledging the fact that Saleha, who is the the heart and soul behind charting uh, community keeps on coming up with new ideas and i think that's the new topic that we all are engrossed into so welcome oishi and krina to the show and let's maybe start with like a two minutes of introduction maybe starting from oishi itself okay um hi thank you so much for including me in this anjali and that was a very warm welcome <laughs> Um, so yeah, um, I arrived in 2020 uh, to pursue Masters of Public Health from Monash and um, I remember when I first got the off letter, I was, um, it was amazing, it was, a, it was a good news for me because I just got done with my bachelor's and then was hunting for colleges and then Monash came in the picture, it was beautiful. Um, you know, and and like all of us would have experienced it, we have to start shopping. We have to look at look at things. What we're gonna get for you know get to Australia? Things we're gonna buy there. Things we're gonna we're gonna buy here. All that stuff. But I think apart from that, it was also we need to take uh, into consideration the you know how it was affecting us. Like you know the fact that each of us were taking a huge mental load because oh my god you're going to shift not just to a new city but the whole new country and I have family here so I I mean for me it was again the transition was very very simple and easy for me I did not have to go through you know looking for accommodations and like looking for uh, who's going to pick me up at the airport oh my god I'm going to reach in this time what if I don't get a cab or something so it was not that was not the issue but you got to still take into consideration that the whole um mental load that you're going to go through and uh, because and that affects you as well right like uh, after all like safety is not just about physical safety it includes each and every aspect so that was that was something um that was something i still remember the jitters i used to get that back then i mean i remember when the flight took off and uh, oh my god it just took off and you're like okay whole new destiny out there let's see how it's going to go but um i've got a small incident to share that happened during the flight i have not shared it with a lot of people um i was um sitting next to a person who was an who was similar to i think same age as me and uh, he made a move at me that shook me because it's a long 13 and a half hour flight right you you want to sleep during that flight you want to take rest and and that's not the kind of welcome you want. And this is not my first flight travel. And it's not the first time I'm traveling alone. So it was something, but that incident was very new to me. And uh, I couldn't sleep a wink the entire flight. I was like, oh my God, like I have to be careful. He just tried to hold my hand. And just because we were having a good conversation, he just thought that's like a ticket to, you know, okay, let's aage baat aage badate. But uh so um anyways you just uh, just the fact that you know that just again another reminder to ourselves that each and every step that you take you have to take into consideration of each and everything like be wary about strangers be wary about you know uh, your safety how do you take care of yourself remember your defenses this that and that and you know how that th that affects you but um touch where nothing happened and again like I mentioned I I have my family over here been very supportive throughout the pandemic and I did not I did not have to face any more of the struggles or anything like that but 
but that was how it started off for me <laughs> but that's so relatable over here um so what about you krina like how did your journey pass through wow so um i came here in 2018 uh, which is a lot lot back like it feels like i've been here too long now almost 3 years and it was a life before covid so it was very different and um i came as an international student at monash i was doing a different course but then i changed my course again so that was a bit of a journey for me but just the part of coming from india to melbourne was uh, a lot of involved a lot of decision making and it always feels like what if they if i take one wrong decision now it's going to affect so many years of my life and just the little things so when i moved here for my parents it was essential that i have some family that can look after me and i had offer letters from many universities from sydney queensland and victoria but i chose melbourne because i have extended family here and that gave a lot of sense of peace to my parents that there is someone who can look after me because i was i was a very coddled child i was like the princess of my home and even though i moved out at 18 i still had a lot of cushioning and to completely leave that and come here was not easy you know just starting out and and when you first come here to pehle hum sab kuch convert karte hai ki nahi kuch bhi karna hai to like say something very simple like going to see a friend you think like oh main uber mein chali jaungi but oh when you convert is like oh my god 15 dollars from one place to another koi baat nahi late hoga to bhi main to tram mein hi baith ke aaungi so you know those little decisions that you make could probably put you at risk but things you do but i think i've come a long way from there and yeah finally here working as a graduate now wow that's so beautiful so um so unlike you guys i remember how australia was also the country that no one in my like no one even not even in my extended to the next level families have ever traveled so like coming to australia was a big decision for my family and also coming to a society who would, would, would want to question you before you take a decision of your own kids like why do we have to send in why send to australia like why not even stay in india like come on look at the iits or iims like they're so good enough why go for australia when your country can provide you but my parents were quite supportive into taking a next leap on being independent and going you know just not letting them shadowing me all my life and taking all the decisions for me so they were quite supportive on that note and i do remember the first mistake that i did was i did not know the moment i come out of the melbourne airport how do i need to book a cab like i was not aware of it so later did i realize so there's like one top tip i would like to give to everyone so how every university provide do provide transports to going from airport to your university or accommodation and that too for free all you need to do is just to book in like minimum of a two or three days in in advance that i did not know about it so i remember how i booked an over and later i knew that i was charged like i was superly charged high um i did not know about it i thought that's how things work but later after a few days i realized oh was i been cop like that so uh, it did not feel really nice about how the country is welcoming me but um it's it's the pace like i think for for every one of us either someone moves it very high or either the person is very slow so i was very slow in really grabbing all the opportunities really getting to know the culture trying to be safe trying to be all calmed not jittered try not to let the homesickness really affect your education that i came through so i came from like i came from delhi and landed up to university of melbourne so the journey has been beautiful but again as we say that everyone have their parts of struggles and let's maybe talk about the same itself so maybe oh she let's start from you like um we knew how beautiful your journey was from monash itself like we knew how you still had family to support but did you face any issues with choosing accommodation or did you always know you would be going to stay with them Well, no not really like i mean the pandemic had affected a lot of plans but i mean i initially idea was to stay like i'm very close to them so you know idea of not staying with them was very absurd so i was like oh 
of course I'm staying with them. So, but you know, after that, like after a year of that, you realize that you know you got to work and you got to have that. You you know the leap that you take to the path of independence where you have to kind of leave the nest. And I've never done that. I've always stayed with my family. Like I even in Bangalore, I was always in like never really moved during my bachelor's or anything. So I think I did that a couple of months back in July. So that's where um, I started house hunting now. Um, and that was not a good experience. It was horrible. I hats off to literally every student who starts doing that from the from their home countries, you know, before arriving to Melbourne. It's not easy. So it's just um, you have to figure out who you're going to move in with, who you're going to, uh, where do you want to stay? Because each suburb is also known for their crime rates, right? I mean, um, I've, I've heard stories of each and every suburb. That's not all suburbs are that, you know, safe in Melbourne. Um, and uh, yeah, so you and the more you read, know about them, you start reading about them. Like, you know, OK, this is what I heard. Like this suburb has, you know, this has been going on. And the more you read and Google, you it's a plethora of information out there. You're going to find all sorts of gibberish. Then you're going to it turns your head. But uh, so, yeah, choosing the suburb, choosing your house and your uh, housemates. I, I had a good group of friends over here, but uh, the fact that you know you live in different place like my universities i couldn't move in with them so um uh, thankfully i came across uh like two good people good friends i knew and i moved in with them they're both males and uh again uh, absolutely absolutely good and uh, i remember my aunt she took an interview for both of them like you know like the whole thing the, with everything that went like do you smoke do you drink and all that <laughs> but um yeah, I think um, as kids, like from a very young age, I was brought up with a single mom. So, of course, she's extremely protective about me and men around me. So she has fed me huge doses about how to be, you know, how to put your defenses on all the time. Like, you know, we've been taught to be wary about uh, predators that are out there. Could be anybody. And because of, you know, because you've been tuned like this from a very young age, we kind of know how to we are smart enough to know how to uh, you know make those decisions for ourselves like do you think this is a right option for us or do you think this is the wrong option do you think these people make the ideal housemates or a uh, friend circle or whatever or do you think this is a group you should hang out with so these are the things that uh, but if you also think about it because our defenses are always on like we are always very we're always double checking how is it affecting our well-being like you must have known right like adrenaline rush right when you're when you're always your stress levels are high adrenaline is high and that increases your stress and and it affects your social and emotional well-being and, and obviously and it's not a good thing so it's just i mean i remember having this conversation with one of my um housemates so i was like i when i had to move in with a male housemate i had like couple of these questions did you have similar questions when you had to like move in with female housemates and the responses were very different like he did not have a lot of those questions whereas I did have my um yeah like my hesitancies but um but yeah it is what it is and uh I wouldn't say it's a struggle I think it's an experience because we all learn from that and then uh I and I I think regarding since we're talking about safety I think one of the most important things is you know, identifying uh, safety in your workplace because I used to uh, I used to work at McDonald's and I was an overnight staff there. And I mean, I would love to know all of your experiences on, you know, we've, we've all been through, right? D done those work, done those casual works. We, some of us still do it. And then, uh, you know, hospitality, retail and uh, working as overnight, uh, in, uh, overnight crew members. And uh, yeah, I would love to know what your experience and your workplaces has been like. So, Karina, just um, continuing, like continuing on the same topic, like how was your accommodation journey? What were your points of consideration while um, selecting an accommodation? And secondly, um, going for it. And what was your points of, um, of like this trust points that you had or maybe you have been always feeded by or maybe family or maybe society mm -hmm. itself? Right. So I moved out at 18 from my town and I moved to Mumbai. So I've been through that journey of house hunting once. And anyone who's lived in Mumbai knows how small the houses are. And the kind of things you fit in in a small place, it's an art. And I think I learned that. So for me, I was okay in a small space too. And that wasn't a problem for me. 
but the only thing that i was looking for was someone who is who's probably who speaks my language because it would be easier to live with them and who who eat the same kind of food and come from the same culture so i i think that was something that i was looking for but again i was not alone and i had my uncle with me who went house hunting and and just having his presence meant a lot to me because he was able to spot things because he's lived here for 10 years and you know little things that we probably don't understand when we first start house hunting is that lease what is a bond we don't know that even though i lived by myself my parents were still paying for everything in india but now i was here on my own and i had to figure those things out for myself even though my parents would support me but you still have to make smart choices right so Probably. that was a very important thing for me to consider and i moved here with a, a young girl and a couple and it was amazing and i never had any problems with them un- until 2020 when the girl had to go to india and unfortunately she could never come back so i was only left with the husband from the couple here and i fortunately never had any problems we've i've always felt safe with him and it it was fine but it's yeah i think knowing how to house hunt is not easy like what she said and the kind of um stress that it like the toll it takes on you is uh, something you don't expect at all because during lockdown my mental health was on a journey of its own i had a hard time and ha- in at that time was when i realized that having a housemate who i could speak to i could just mm. approach and say hey how's it going kya kar rahi hai chal kahin jaate hai at least ek walk pe jayenge so it feels so good but i didn't have anybody so i had to figure all that out on myself ki self care kaise karu i'm lucky i am from a social work degree background that i understand the importance of self care and looking after myself so while i was so upset for the first month and a half of lockdown i was like no you can't be like this you didn't come so far and your parents didn't spend so much money for you to be sad and depressed get up and get going and us dark place se bahar nikalna easy nahi hota hai and i'm sure a lot of international students have been through this journey Makes and sense. i and i just want to say i'm so proud and so fascinated by the resilience international students and all women have shown during this time i think so, everyone for that matter everyone right? has and it's not been easy so yeah that that was my journey and 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 the next part was then going to university after moving here finding a house and what i found was in my course there were no international students which was a very big challenge for me because i never had the opportunity to make friends here and i would see other other international students from different courses who would have like a group of friends going out they would go on road trips कोई ग्रेट ओशन रोड जा रहा है कोई फिलिप आइलैंड जा रहा है एंड आई एम ऑलवेज सिटिंग हियर लोनली एंड आई थॉट टू माय सेल्फ व्हाई डोंट आई हैव इंडियन स्टूडेंट्स इन माय कोर्स बट बिकॉज़ आई वाज डूइंग समथिंग एल्स देयर वर नो इंडियन स्टूडेंट्स इन माय क्लास एंड टू जस्ट अ ब्लेंड इन विद देम इट इट ऑलमोस्ट टुक मी अ ईयर टू ब्लेंड इन विद देम एंड राइट आफ्टर दैट वी वेंट इनटू लॉकडाउन एंड यूनी वाज ऑनलाइन सो वो सोशल आइसोलेशन बहुत ज्यादा हो गया मेरे लिए and yes. and including periods yeah i mean i feel like like the lockdown has affected your period cycles as well yes yes Which, i'm sure and, and i a, think a lot yeah. of girls would relate to that i almost had a pcos scare because i suddenly started putting on weight i was so moody depressed and sad i was getting mental health support from my university I think it's just and, a vicious circle how everyone has mm-hmm. been trapped into some hair. I think it's yes. just not Krina, it's just not me or it might not be just Oishi going through it. I think everyone would have touched at least one point of it whether it's about your health or you're not taking care of your food or it's mm-hmm. just about how you are you might not be able to socialize. Like but yeah. I really really appreciate how we have touched on a very two important top topics like how Oishi mentioned about what really happens at work. that might be we talking about in uh, in just a moment and krina worked krina really talked about the mental and well being but before we could move forward we have got a question about um 
from indicator about if there are any booking apps available online and if we can book it through maybe through in it from indian airport or um how did you guys book maybe they, i think they're talking about the cats so how did you book through it i think from what i know is because monash had already sent an email out there um for upcoming international students so all students who are going to be enrolled i'm i can speak only for monash so they do receive a a uh, welcome email and they do let them know as well ki um, what all is available to website mein jaoge to you get um okay, okay. You know, options are there and i was so very excited when i got and i wanted to see the nook and corner of the entire website so there are and the cars that comes to pick you up is amazing so <laughs> so i i think um, university takes care of that so you wouldn't need an app to book through but, uh, that's for monash Yes and similarly from Melbourne Uni I can speak about Melbourne Uni itself like how there's every university have a union um or like for Melbourne Uni it was AMSO like those union of students so you can either approach them like if you in case have missed any type of information or you do, if you have like, those burning questions at the last moment and you don't know whom to answer like you just maybe pop in in their socials ask them or even I remember calling them instead like I called you uni- help from india itself on how do i need to uh, how need to go through the onboarding process but definitely from med unit itself they had arranged a car and again oh you were right like it was so amazing so I, i'm so sure it was suv i couldn't get the opportunity but if you can book well in advance you can you do not need to like for newcomers you don't have to pay for like a penny even just to come from airport to your accommodation they'll drop you very safely but um when i since i did not avail that opportunity because i did not know about it i had booked uber like i had booked through uber and um that was to be very very honest that was exorbitantly high like i don't know what was the surge or what was that the uber driver itself but it was exorbitantly high but what what about you prina like how did you come from airport to your accommodation So my uncle picked me up, and when I moved here, I was also I also started at Monash, so I have the same information as Oishi. Okay. But yeah, unis do have that pickup service, and I think some apps like Ola and Uber app, I think they are both yeah. global apps, so they can be used in any country. So you can still check prices from your home country for when you pick up or like schedule a pick up on yeah. Uber app if you if you need that service. Yeah, that's a great information. Mm-hmm. And just so, where did you go to begin house hunting? Uni websites, apps, friends. I think that's a very, very important topic because I know how there's like two to three people who might be coming next February started DMing me, slipping through those text questions about accommodation. I think that's the bo- the most burning question that people have it right now. So I found my accommodation from a group on Telegram. It's a uh, Victorians, uh, Gujaratis in Victoria, okay. and uh, they keep posting these ads for all Gujarati people who want to be in that group, and that's how I found my accommodation. So when you download the Telegram app, do you need to search yes. for that? Okay. Yeah, you, you search, search for the group. group. Yeah, and there's a uh, uh, one available for I think all states. There's one for uh, Sydney, one for uh, Queensland. amazing what about you ishi um i had I, when i arrived here i did not really look for accommodations or cab mm-hmm. services i just got picked up by my farm and straight went to their place yes, um sure. but, but after that because i did know the ins and outs of melbourne i did know people around and again i shifted with people i know so it was through friends but um i think app what i used uh, was flatmates a very common app that's again something that i've learned after coming to melbourne and facebook marketplace it uh, oh, yeah. i'm currently in the middle of house that's hunting that is that is really good <laughs> Yeah. So when I came here, because I did not know about any of these apps, and neither did I really took um a lot of initiatives. No, because it was such a last minute decision for me as well. What I did was I had booked Airbnb. I would always say just like 
the best mental relaxation that you can give yourself is if you could book the accommodation well in advance in India itself rather than coming over here in this hustle you'll just anyway get lost also finding accommodation for you so I remember how I had taken accommodation in Airbnb for seven days and that seven days really haunted me because it just felt like it's a, it's a, like a sandstorm it's a, like a time clock like it would just run away and I'll have no roof so it was very scary for me and then I had taken gone through another Airbnb because I could find my accommodation just seven days and that's so so um, reasonable of not finding it so I went to the next Airbnb before I could really find a university accommodation but what I have learned through a lot of experiences of my friends is like um, you can take a lot of a lot of accommodation options either it's private whether it's from flatmates real estate Facebook marketplace or your university would have your um, inside an accommodation itself or or even uni lodge like those are the student um, built accommodation where only students tend to stay so like you really do not have to care about your utilities you really do not really care about those legal aspects because you will be covered on that part but um apart from i that, just want to I touch on something anjali it. yeah because you mentioned about university accommodation the idea of a hostel in india mm. is very different and we tend to think that oh khana bhi milega sab kuch ho jayega matlab ek campus hoga bahut bada and i will walk to my uni and the idea of college is very different and idea of hostel is very different to what we experience here and mm. i think a lot of people yes, that's people, that's not the perception that you should always be carrying so yeah, like not on, at all yeah so Krina like since you like you both of you mentioned about how you had family over here so Chris mentioned about um, since you already had in um, there was a support but is it easy or difficult for a female student who have no family in the place they move like based on your friends experience or what you have heard like do yes I do agree that there would be a plus point having family but does that mean having no family is a disadvantage um, I know I moved, I mean, my best friend moved along with me and he is a he. So it, I think irrespective of the gender, it is it is a little difficult if you don't have that support. If you don't have, of course, it is going to be, you, you have to find everything by yourself. So um, it is going to be, but I wouldn't be able to say much on that. But all I know is that um a lot of students that i know who have who had to find who had to like struggle a little bit i mean anjali i think you're the best person to talk about on this matter because i mean clearly the fact the seven days like you mentioned that it haunted you i can completely i can imagine how how bad that might have been and so yeah i can then like swoosh the question to me itself so um i think it is not an advantage because with with a lot of so one thing that i would really uh appreciate was if there was an a guidance like maybe a lighting to just show you that there's a light uh, on the other hand of the tunnel like that is a great help but i would not say it's a disadvantage because i re- i realized how if my family or anyone would have been over here it would have been just like india like i would have been completely relied on them even unconsciously i would have been so so not very energetic in terms of taking initiatives networking trying to find the basic opportunities to a good opportunities i would not be very much improving on myself because i would always know that there's someone who i have my back of so i would not it it takes a lot of efforts to know what you really want but i would say never discourage of not having anyone who like you don't have to know anyone that's why the the entire journey of coming outside your comfort zone is that you tend to discover yourself and explore unleash your potential and try to fly as high as you can so that's what i said but i think there is also one more important question about even if you have a family what happens blending into a new culture like even even having a family that does not that would not give you an advantage that you can blend into a new culture because there will always be an a cultural shock there will always be an a culture by that you might not be able to get into it so how did you have did you have any issues making friends or even getting to the culture that you are not aware of um you want to go first Krina? <laughs> yeah i think i have a lot to say about not being able to make friends so in india i had a big group of friends 
and uh, like the girl gang you know and i always crave that i crave that even now when i wish all my friends were here but i never had that opportunity to make friends here now i'm in a workplace where i've found good friends one of them being oishi and uh, i've had the opportunity to connect but like i mentioned before i was in a course where there were no indian students in my class in a batch of 200 students and only about 10 international students out of which i was the only indian and all and 190 were domestic australian students who had a full life here some of them were married some of them were a lot older than me and i was always the exotic person in the class like they would ask me questions about oh how is it in india how how do you do these things like from a very cultural perspective they would want my opinion but i was never a friend mm-hmm. and i am still not and i always struggle i i had two friends from back home and they they were living far away someone moved to another city mm-hmm. so that never built like those relationships never built for me and in doing so i i just threw myself in work to the point where i would exhaust myself and my parents would question me that but who is asking you to work so much like if you are you doing it for the money and i would say no not for the money but just to not feel socially isolated i do understand i also did not take a lot of initiative in joining university groups or maybe you know joining group like i think that's the bumble like, a lot of people yeah. find friends from bumble and i could have just as easily done that but because i chose a different path as my coping mechanism and and working all the time i never made mm. those social connections but i but could have know, yeah that. but i think you gave a very important tip about joining those societies or clubs like your university already having like so types of like find your likes find your passion get in, into people having like you you at least know they are like minded people and mm-hmm. that's how they you'll just break the ice but Absolutely. what about you is she like did you also face what krina went through um so after a week of arriving here the pandemic hit and i did not ever get to go meet my classmates um face to face but um no i i did take the initiatives actually to just join because i was all excited i was just like okay this is a new phase in life i want to just just jump it through so i joined all the clubs i am coming i'm like i said public health so it's not really part of monash campus it's a um you must have heard of alfred hospital so my campus is that and we don't have a lot of uh, different uni clubs the only thing that we have is monash health science society so i joined that and met with my classmates online we used to have online uh, um you know sessions where we kind of study together and all that but it, it, it's i think it's always difficult to kind of network and because after yeah. all when you come to a different country you apart from pursuing an education you also want to learn more about the culture experience it learn you know have a nice experience over here um and i think i missed out on that the entire 2020 um definitely. all of us definitely all of us did yeah everybody who i mean who has arrived here before that have missed out a chunk as well and so i think but um what we can do is always make the best out of the situation so because because of the pandemic because working from home was an option like studying from home was an option it kind of opened a channel to you know get involved on these online um shows and on sorry not shows what are those uni things that they had um game um, nights and online events yeah exactly all those events game nights and stuff like that which i mean honestly speaking you wouldn't be going you wouldn't be traveling every day if it was if it was a face to face thing i'm a very lazy person so it wouldn't be feasible for me to travel every day for those game nights and it's just like tap in the computer and then you're sitting and yeah, so much but right. you know after a couple of weeks then that kind of hits you like that zoom fatigue does hit you so i i mean i had my lows as well i was like you know this is again i just immersed into studies and i got into research projects because i was like you know what let's just focus on studies now maybe networking and friends is not and then i just entered into this place where i i i i love going out talking i get energy talking to people but because of 2020 suddenly i entered this couch where you know 
I just don't feel like talking a lot or like, you know, just, you know, stay yeah, by definitely. an ambivert person rather than an extrovert. So um, I think that changed. But I think um, what one should always do is, um, you know, look for opportunities. If it's all about if it's about networking and friends, it's always out there. And universities does a lot to gives you a lot of options to and provides you a lot of platforms to connect with people. And um, I would also say, you know, there are a lot of groups in Facebook, like international students in Melbourne. And if you're coming from different countries, they have their own individual groups there. So connect with people there. Because if I am thinking like this, another person sitting in uh, Malaysia is probably thinking something like this. So, you know, you can meet people thinking alike. And it, yeah, I think that happens. So just getting connected that way works. Um, that was that was my journey and experience. That's so, so true. So um, when you ladies look back, so this is what Chris asked, do you reckon this decision to move by yourself has liberated you as an individual? Like, I would really want to take this question. Like, for me, it is a complete yes. Like, I do, I feel so, so grateful taking this decision. I feel so grateful to have those parents really accepting my decision, respecting to really what I wanted. I feel the empowered woman that I am today could have never been if I would have never been in Australia. Like, it's not about India or Australia. It's not about any culture. It's not about any freedom. It's about doing everything of your own. So I remember how the first time I paid rent of my own, I remember how the feeling was so, so blissful. The first time, I, I know I couldn't have uh, never paid the fees because very late, it's so high. And with having worked 20 hours, you could just spend over like those living expenses. But the feeling is so grateful standing on your own feet. So I remember how having the full having my first full time job, I was able like I'm able to manage my living like whatever I do want for I know back of the mind I can get for myself. So the feeling has been great. And the, the journey, the journey from first day to now has been great. So like you, it's just like an ACG machine. You see ups and downs. But at the end of the day, you're out of the hospital. Like you are so out. So that's good for me. So what about you guys? Yeah, you're the absolute same. Yeah, like all of us, right? Yes. But like, since we have already touched about this job and we just, to, we have started speaking about our awful letter, we then spoke about accommodation, creating friends, and now all of us are graduated, if I'm not wrong. Let's talk about how did the journey actually go about hunting jobs? How did you really get into land up to the job that we really now have, like maybe starting from Krina itself? And how did you find through it? Like whether it's about um, networking or maybe a, a particular like LinkedIn you tend to follow or was it based on the referral that you got? Hmm. Okay, so uh, last year during the peak of lockdown, uh, I was uh, I became a part of Project SAS, which is a part of uh, Indian Cares Project uh, for South Asian Student Support. And Oishi okay. is the project officer for that now. But last year, um, I became a part of the project and it was so an like amazing you, sorry to cut you, but Karina, how did you get part of it? Like through LinkedIn? So or? my university invited uh, students to participate in the project. They were looking for South Asian student representatives from the universities. Okay. And I was chosen for the University of Melbourne. And that's how I participated in the project. And we, uh, so the project ran until uh, April. And we did various activities through which I had the opportunity to connect with a lot of people. Uh, one but of was them being my manager right now. Part of It was just a project. It was just a project for students, but it was a paid project. Okay. And uh, it was a great opportunity. And the sessions that we conducted through that project on job hunting, networking, and uh, our rights and responsibilities, I think that gave me a lot of grounding of living in Australia. And through that, I had the opportunity to learn more about Indian care and connect with my now manager. And uh, I found a volunteering opportunity after at Indian care. And that's how I started. And now I have a job there. So uh, yeah, it's, it's, it's been a journey. And I did struggle to find a job. And uh, as they say, visa, visa ka har sabko problem hota hai that they say nahi australian residents ko hi job milega nahi 
नहीं मिलेगा टेम्पररी रेजिडेंस को ग्रेजुएट्स को इतना जल्दी जॉब नहीं मिलता विच इज ट्रू एंड विच इज समथिंग आई एक्सपीरियंस टू एंड आई गॉट अ जॉब ऑलमोस्ट सिक्स मंथ्स आफ्टर आई वॉज ग्रेजुएटेड एंड द वेटिंग पीरियड इज वेरी चैलेंजिंग इट मेक्स यू क्वेश्चन योर अबिलिटीज योर आइडेंटिटी वाई आर यू इवन इन दिस कंट्री यू कुड बी जस्ट हैप्पी बैक होम इफ यू जस्ट लेफ्ट but then totally, yeah things totally, totally so true you know like i love how the journey started from a paid project maybe in a paid internship went to yeah. volunteering and now you're working there so and yeah what it's about been you I mean, hats off! Seriously, it's a good. It's always inspiring to hear stories like this because uh, you know it just brings faith back on you. Like you know, people's got it. Yes, I think. Um, yeah, like you know, Krina said. I think the first thing would be create a good LinkedIn account. <laughs> uh-huh. I've been told by my family n number of times since the time I started doing my bachelor's to create a good LinkedIn account because that's going to be out there, and that's your professional journey, and that's what the recruiters are going to see. and after that after coming here and um you know volunteering is one big one big game out there so i used to volunteer at this organization called live well hepatitis victoria and then different different organizations related to my field and um hoping that's going to you know offer an opportunity later on so volunteering and then again like you know networking through linkedin like and just um because i um got i was i'm working at indian care as well so I got to know Saleha through LinkedIn, and uh, at, because of Chai Chai community as well. Actually, she put yes, up a post. Saleha up. is the uh, is the reason why we have Chai Chai in community. Yeah, right? exactly. So kind of thankful to Chai Chai community for that. So, <laughs> Same. Yeah. <laughs> and then, um, so she put up a post on the. There was this conversation on mental health among students during the pandemic, and then I responded to that, and. Um, and we started talking and that's how i came across project sas uh, the job des- description and applied for it and you know worked my way through it and um i think uh, the whole job hunting process it's there's no there's no solution or there's no one way solution to it or you know there's no path to it that this is what you do you have linkedin you're volunteer and you're going to get it that's not how it works i there's always there are always challenges that's going to come but i but i feel I mean, it's all right because you learn from these challenges. You're gonna have lots of ups and downs. These rejection emails are gonna teach you something. It's gonna grow resilience. But um, it's it's mostly about just keeping a straight mind of what you want to do. Like, where do you see yourself? As in, how meaningful you think your work and your skill is gonna be used as? And you know, it's about that. Just having that. Where, like you know, having your own job description, like what is an ideal job description for you, and keeping that clear, and working your way through it. I mean, we are all just graduates. We have a long life ahead. We want to achieve a lot of different things. We have ambitions. We want to contribute to the society in various ways. <laughs> I think we're just we're just going about it. But I think just to have a very clear picture of what you want to do and what you want to do right now will help you get that job. that's so great guys like i just like love how your two aims really connected through indian care and definitely through chai chai and community but so my journey so i have always been a very nerd about education so i used to remember uh, like i used to just study because that's how job hunting used to work in india like you need to study you get good marks and that's how you get jobs but later i realized that that's not the mechanism or that's not the process that we follow over here i realized like i i don't even think my company even knows i'm masters um accredited like they haven't even asked about any of those certificates any of those marks so what i realized the important thing was it's more of the experience rather like it could be an experience whether it's about internship or volunteering that really matters. matters than um just studying along it because they also would want to see so your cv is really ex- is is the just a written version of what you are it speaks about the skills whether it's about hard and soft but going through all those opportunities and never looking just for going through 
part time jobs that's not the key it could be any opportunity that you can um really get into it polish yourself and show that to into cv and try to have that work through the job that you're really looking for but for me i was i realized how people of like people of my batch would really network with professors would really uh, network with guest speakers it's just so i used to feel very icky but later i realized how this is not being icky it's not about just you seeking job it's also about how they really require an asset like you prove your worth so um i got my job through linkedin itself there was there was in one of my connection she just posted how there might there is an opening over here and for any if you really need the job or you think you're a good choice why not a swoop in the cv in the inbox i did that and that's how the process begins so before that i had been applying constantly like the rejections were very hard but it makes you strong so i, I feel the best way of job hunting is to first never lose hope second just you know it's how like if you are thrown into a river you know you need to survive it so you'll try whatever way you can just to swim out of that so it's just about never losing hope it, there is no one way of getting job there it is a combination of all those experiences all those ways that you do and you land up getting job i have heard people um i have never heard anyone that is that have been trying a lot and still haven't got job it's just about the time true uh anjali can we just go back to and touch on something of finding a casual job when you move here because i think a lot of students will start coming from next year and that's going to be their first question that job kaise milega and I'm I'm actually happy that Australia does give that opportunity to work 20 hours legally and for some and for some people even there's there's no working hour limit right now in uh, I think uh, healthcare Hospital. sectors yes. healthcare and hospitality yeah. healthcare and hospitality so and I think that are the two areas that they really need people and how to find those jobs because when I moved here I was certain that I cannot work in food industry because I I never grew up in a in a house that had meat and it was cooked there I'm a vegetarian so I knew that was never an option for me so I had to find a job in maybe retail or something else and and when I moved here I was constantly told that nahi nahi indian students ko to retail mein lete hi nahi hai they they don't want people like us etc because, because their general perception is that we can't speak english which is completely incorrect and a racial stereotyping but anyway i it was a struggle and i thought no i'm just going to apply from seek and linkedin and look for jobs but finding casual jobs is not that easy but right now there will there is a void that needs to be filled and i believe a lot of international students will benefit from that but my key tip would be print a bunch of resumes and walk around with them go from store to store restaurant to restaurant and ask are you hiring can i speak to your manager and just hand, hand in your cv maybe 9 out of 10 will be thrown in a bin but at least one person will probably look at it totally, and totally. there will be someone who will take a chance on you and yeah you and there are jobs so you will get one yes and i think one pro tip from my side would be never never settle on any underpaid job like yeah if the if the legal requirement of australia is getting a minimum of 20 dollars an hour like if you are above 18 or 18 so like never never settle for any less like you you know your worth never i wouldn't say that it's but it's like you you it's an illegal thing like do not stoop that low that's it hmm. but you know you touched upon a very important thing about racial discrimination or what happens at workplace so has it ever been a time that you felt maybe insecure unsafe or went through any of the stereotypical comments that anyone could get based on size shape culture ethnicity uh ethnicity yes a lot and uh, like where where i work comments are thrown around like oh indian indian customers always ask for discounts you know indian customers are always like this if there's an indian customer they'll be like oh greena can you help them and i also sometimes feel that it's okay because i can speak the language it's easier for me to communicate with them 
but then what happens is the people get too friendly with me and it often happens that group of guys will come in and they'll just start talking to me like i'm their friend but i'm not so they sometimes they don't understand that this is a place of work and i am not their friend and then like what she said we put our guards up all the time because that's how we've been brought up so, so what do you do in, in the situation that arises like that so what is your response to uh, this tip i i speak to them very formally then and then i switch to speaking to them in english because if i speak to them in hindi and you know thoda haske baat karenge and all they think that oh ladki bhi line de rahi hai and i just want to make a sale come on i am there for my commission i am not your friend <laughs> but uh, yeah you then i have my own ways uh, maybe if if i feel unsafe i'll probably ask my manager to step in and help me in those situations but yeah yeah there are two sides about it and then i also feel that i don't want girls who work here who are australians who've been living here all their life to speak to those kind of guys who would come to shop in my store because it just tarnishes their image of say indian guys or or from any south asian background that they are like that only mm. so yeah that that constantly happens to me so what about you ishi like any of these um things that really clicked with you or has it ever happened to you yeah so um like back in india i have never worked like i started my i started working after coming to melbourne only because i finished my undergrad and then i without a gap year i uh, without working i just moved on to my post grad so my first experience was an underpaid job at a servo 15 dollars per hour i worked for free for one week on the pretext of you know learning so um of course i was told that you know you can sue this person but i was just very happy that you know it's a job not that i needed it for the money but because apparently everybody says that you get in you need to have an australian experience to get into anywhere so i was like you know this is a good opportunity and during the pandemic nobody was offering jobs i thought this is good enough but i think after a week and two you'd realize that this is not like you know like anjali said that you really know your worth you don't want to do something you don't want to do that um but um like you know um i used to work at mcdonalds earlier and um there there was and i was part of the overnight staff so you know you used to lo- get a lot of um uh, used to get crowds who were drunk or you know who, who were not that friendly um i all i can say is that i kind of because i've never worked earlier and that was a that was a that was very new for me it was hard to kind of uh, digest the situation at that point of time and the same hand very commendable because a lot of australians who have been working from the age of 16 knows how to handle it i feel like it's you know that you see that cultural difference there because i was not brought up that independent lifestyle it was so it was just so i, I thought like somebody's going to take care of me somebody's going to be up there but I, as in like you know if something bad happens let me just give a call and i can get out of it but that, not always you can use those situations you have to kind of work your way out so um but um in like you know uh, krina mentioned and when a lot of south asians are working and then they kind of think okay because you're also identify as a identify in a similar fashion you can um treat them as your equal or you can treat them as whatever as your buddy even though you're not because in workplace especially in 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 a fast food chain you don't have buddies in not in not at 12 o'clock in the night you don't want buddies so i think um what it's very important for at that point of time i didn't really know how to handle situations like this i used to see a lot a lot of people kind of make uh, swift comments to a lot of female workers and uh, many people have made comments like that to me and i have the rights to sue that person or i had the rights to kind of take it up but uh, i did not because uh, i didn't really know how to what paths should i take you know like i know i can uh, do this but how do i do it right i mean like uh, whom do i call like 911 or uh, no right i have to call a legal service i have no idea how to go about that and because at that point of time i'm studying i'm working i want to sleep and you know you don't want to get into the whole let's google about this let's look it up let's so at the back of my head it's like okay you know what chalta hai i i mean like let's just get it over with that kind of an attitude comes to you 
which is very wrong i think we need to as individuals we need to know what our rights and responsibilities are at workplaces it's very important to not have this chalta hai attitude because somebody is not doing you right you are affect you're getting affected your mental health is getting affected there and this might lead to a very i mean what if that comment was a um, you know a, a touch or something like that that could have affected you right so i, I think it's very important uh, to know one's rights and responsibilities so i think those are the things that i had such a great Oishi, point sorry anjali i want to add something on what oishi just mentioned that we came here as single girls but there's so many international students who come as married couples as well and and a, a lot of young girls probably don't even understand that just these kind of casual behaviors with them in a workplace are not okay or even in their marriage even in the relationship they don't have the ability to identify that something is not right or where they can seek support so i think just that understanding and i i'm, I'm in, including myself i would say i until a year ago i didn't know that an organization like safe step exists because where we thing is police ko phone lagao yahi hai matlab you would do the same here but we still wouldn't approach or even consider doing those things but i think it's very important to educate young women and girls like us that hey this is wrong you need to stop you need to speak up you need to complain and your visa will not be cancelled you will still be able to live in the country you will not lose that scholarship i believe universities also push that message out there that speak up don't be scared even if it's sexual harassment at the university or anything but because we are so scared of that legal system because of where we come from we we don't speak right, up and right. it's good so timing right. because from starting tomorrow we are beginning 16 days of activism it's a campaign to stop violence against women and calling harmful behaviors out and as as young people like us if we begin that and if we participate in things and campaigns like this we can raise a lot of awareness within our community because we can speak the language we have that emotional uh, understanding of what happens when someone goes through things like this so so true krina like i just i just hope like all of these conversation that we have really helps inspires and supports anyone like you know even if unconsciously if someone listens to it if they would know that like she did it and and she really did told me not to do the same thing so mm. i just hope anywhere our conversation really helps and i think we would be able to really sleep better if we know we could make the world a better place from our own mistakes so that other does not repeat it but um since being very conscious of the time as well um really really appreciate krina and oishi being so strong because i know it takes a lot of audacity a lot of guts to speak that in open and especially we do have that st- we somehow still have a mindset of what would the society think of us like should these thing be uh, should these things be open out loud so loud like especially coming from the victim itself or it should always be under the blanket so i am i really appreciate how both of us and in fact um, all of us who have been questioning are so much so much involved in this conversation and that gives strength to us like that that shows us how the topic that we have picked really can affect everyone and this is what people wanted to hear about so thank you so much for people who have uh, who have either asked for us or um people like ananya my nani who commented on how great we are doing uh, so thanks to Varun, Indian Care, Chris, are constantly asking. But before we leave, I would really give the stage to you guys to speak any last-minute things, or I mean, last-minute tip, or anything that you would want to speak up before we end up the show. Oh, she, you go first. Oh God, I just go on and on, and we have two minutes. But I would just say that you know, um, anybody who is planning on coming to Melbourne, go for it. It's it's an experience of a lifetime. Lots to learn and. um you know we all learn as we go so very quickly <laughs> rounded it off yes so, i would say the same you? take it one day at a time it's a journey a lot of exciting things will happen to you just 
just make sure to not give up ask for help if you need it there is support available out there and thank you so much again anjali you are a great host and uh, you made us feel a lot more confident about ourselves so thank you thanks for having me here thank you so much guys i would like to say that even a butterfly have stages of egg larva pupa so like do not consider yourself to be a pro on the first day itself and always always reach out to people that that's so all right asking for help that's so all right not to be okay so never never lose hope never try to keep everything bottom up rather than waiting for that volcano to burst up it's always better to talk it talk it out because in this country there could be never a problem that has no solution so thanks for that guys thanks for krina and oshi thanks everyone for having a night nice spent with us thank you thank you thank you